Tiger Designer. Tiger Designer is a component of the Tiger software suite that allows you to fine-tune ViewPlus documents before sending them to your ViewPlus embosser. Tiger Designer uses files with the .prn extension or the .tdsx extension. A PRN file is a print job which has been printed to file rather than being sent directly to the printer. Tiger Designer displays braille or embossing dots visually on your computer screen in grayscale and allows you to make adjustments that make the document more useful to a blind reader. If you are using one of our ink and braille embossers, Tiger Designer can display the two layers of the document together or separately. This tutorial will be a basic overview of Tiger Designer's functions. To begin, open Tiger Designer by tapping your Windows key and typing Tiger Designer and pressing Enter. You may also navigate to the Start menu with your mouse, opening the All Programs and View Plus folders to click Tiger Designer's icon. Open a PRN file by pressing Ctrl-O and navigating to the location where you previously saved it. To learn more about saving a PRN file, please see our previous tutorial printing to file and refining in Tiger Designer. Once you have your PRN file loaded, you will notice a menu bar and a toolbar along the top. If your PRN file was written using one of our View Plus ink and braille embossers, your document will have two layers, one for ink and one for embossing, and you may switch between them by clicking the arrow tools on the toolbar or by using page up and page down on the keyboard. You may also press F2 to toggle the combined view in which the ink and braille layers are combined. These same tools can also be used to navigate through multi-page documents. Notice that your toolbar changes as you move between the ink and braille layers of the document. There is one set of tools for editing the ink layer and another set for the braille layer. Some tools are common to both layers. To the right of the arrow tools are tools for magnification. You may also press Ctrl-I and Ctrl-U to zoom in and out for more precise control. In the Ink Layer Toolbar, you will find the Color Palette tool and an Eye Drop tool, which lets you select your working color by clicking a pixel in your page. There is a tool that looks like an X, which sets your color to None, effectively disabling drawing. Next are the Pen, with which you can perform freehand drawing, and the Brush, which paints a wider stroke lighter at the edges than in the middle. After the brush is the line tool, which you will use to stretch a straight line from one point to another. The next is two rectangle tools, one empty and one filled. There are also two oval tools, again one for the outline only and one a filled oval. There is a paint bucket which flood fills an area with the current color that is selected. The last tool is a selection tool which you can use to select a rectangular area and copy it to another location or perform other transformations. Now, if you change to the embossing layer of your project, your embossing toolbar starts with eight squares, ranging from white to black with shades of gray in between. Our embosser will emboss black more deeply, and of course white will not emboss at all. The blue square represents the height of a braille dot, which is variable depending on the settings in your printer driver your selected media, and your formatter settings. We do not recommend using the blue square for drawing tools. After these dot height tools is the X, and like the X in the ink toolbar, this disables drawing. Then you have the pencil and the brush, the line tool, the two rectangles and the two ovals, and the paint bucket fill tool, which all function in a similar way to the corresponding ink tools. Next is a Pattern Fill tool. The Pattern Fill tool flood fills an area with one of several predefined patterns. You may select your pattern and even edit a pattern from the tool menu. Here you can select the pattern that will be used in your Pattern Fill tool, and you can even edit the pattern that is available in each of the selectable patterns. You can define new patterns, give them names, and you are not limited to a 4x4 grid. To edit one of the four original patterns, simply select a color representing your desired dot height and click the squares where you want the dots to be embossed. Remember, this pattern will be repeated to fill the space where you decide to use it. To create a new custom pattern, type a name in the name field. The pattern type dropdown will become available and you can select a grid of up to 8x8. Then select a dot height and start clicking squares. 
Next on the embossing toolbar is the selection tool, which allows you to select a rectangular area and copy it to another area or perform other transformations. Finally, there is a braille label tool, allowing you to place braille labels wherever you need them. Next, I would like to take a moment to describe the transformation menu. When you select an image or a text label, not only can you copy it to another area of the document, you can use the transform menu to rotate or shift it, or perform other transformations within that area. Save your work and press Ctrl P when you are ready to emboss. To find more tutorials on this or other topics, please visit www.viewplus.com.